What's going on everybody? I'm Dylan from Quest for Nostalgia where I teach how I do all my 3D printed movie props. In this video, I want to teach you all my Cura settings on how I print this and the orientation that I put it on the printer. I'll be showing you two different files, the DO3D file and then also mollus.plugus.designs on Instagram's file. DO3D, if you want to do that file, I have a code Q4N20 where you can get 20% off anything in their store at all. But if you want to get the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Green Ranger helmet from them, you can get 20% off and it helps out the channel. Thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things. It's been really helping me out. We're growing like crazy. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the support on Twitch and everything like that. Everything from sending me plastic from the wish list, Patreons, all of the support. You guys are absolutely amazing. Let's get into Cura and let me show you some of the plugins that I use, like custom supports, and go over my settings and get this file sliced. But first, let's go over what I have set up on my Cura. So I use a CR10 V2, so I just use a CR10S profile. I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I print at standard quality. What I do is I actually have my initial layer height at 0.28, just one quality layer thicker, and that gives me some good stick for my first layer, as well as my initial layer line width, I over extrude to 105%. That really has given me amazing bed adhesion, and I think that that is how I've had so many successful prints these days. My infill density is 10. Uh, I use 10% infill with a gyroid pattern, and that's pretty much what I do unless I'm doing something that has to be very sturdy. I'll bump up to 20, like say a handle for like a big sword or something like that, but mostly I just keep it at 10%. I don't print wicked fast. I use 50 millimeters per second. I think that gives me good quality. And I don't try to go any bit higher than that. I keep my supports turned off, but my support density I have set to 4%. I also use rafts. I use five millimeters of extra margin on my rafts and one top layer. Features that I add into my Cura are custom supports. So one thing that you're gonna wanna do, and if you wanna imitate how I slice thing is, like I said, I have my supports turned off. I add in the cylindrical custom support installed and then also custom support eraser. That's gonna allow me to block out supports that I don't want. So these are the two models that I like the most. On the left is the models.pogos.designs on Instagram's model there. And then on the right, we have DO3D's updated Green Ranger. They're both very attractive. The DO3D on the right is a little bit sharper. The one on the left is a little bit softer, but it looks more like the Bandai helmet but they both have such a nice look to them. So let's look at the pros and cons of each model here. On the right is DO3Ds. I do have a code Q4N20 will get you 20% off of all of their models, whether it be the Green Ranger or anything else in the shop. Uh, but yes, that will help you out on there. They have all of their features separate. So the eyes are separate, the mouth is separate, the gem is separate. That's gonna allow you to paint that a lot easier as well as these teeth are very sharp, which makes masking them so much easier to paint. If you look over at the Mollus.Polgus one, you can kind of see they kind of just smooth into the helmet. That's gonna be a little bit harder to keep that very sharp. Now this might be a plus or a minus to you. So on the Green Ranger for the DO3D, they have already have these buckles installed into them. It's like a fake buckle system. So you don't have to do the class system like I show in my tutorial. Uh, what it does is it uses this magnet system in the back. Uh, I actually prefer molluses on that because I do like to have the real buckles. And you'll see when we look at slicing, that magnet rim is really annoying to print. This one prints so much better. Let's talk about the size of these helmets too. So on the right here is significantly larger on the DO3D. This one I'd actually have to take down to a 96. I have a seven and three eighths hat size. And this one on Mollus, I usually do 102. So that brings these a comparable. You can see that the DO3D is just angled slightly different there, but that makes these almost the same size. If you get them lined up there, that makes them a lot more comparable. But yeah, so I had to downsize DO3Ds quite a lot on this one, surprisingly. And then Malas, I had to bump up to that 102. So let's talk about how I orient these helmets. I like to take it to the 45 degrees. That maximizes the build space for these. It allows me to do very big helmets in this way for the Green Ranger. I lay it back to where the back of this rim is touching and then also right down behind the chin. Get those both touching the build plate and then this is going to maximize the space. 
as much as I like the sharpness and the amenities of the DO 3D helmet, one thing that is my biggest pet peeve is it always feels like their features are just smashed on. So this buckle, this magnet layer, when you see it lays down and we're gonna slice it here in a second, there's going to be almost as if it's two completely separate models that have to end up coming together. Always feels like their details are kind of mashed on rather than being built together. As you can see here, this is without supports. It is at 379 grams of plastic. For the model stop plug us, I can do this a lot less and it also will already have the mouth built into it, the eyes built into it, the gem built into it. So this one uses up a lot of plastic, surprisingly. Like I mentioned before, this one has a lot of things where it feels like there's almost two completely separate items being printed here. That is that magnet wall and then also the start of the helmet. Again, if you go over here and we look at where these buckles and where the other part of the helmet is gonna start, you're gonna see there's so many pieces here that are trying to print all on their own. You're catching almost all these little islands and that's going to be a big pain when you're trying to support everything. Uh, so we're gonna definitely go through and do the Mollus.Pulgus one. I'm gonna go through the full setup of what it looks like with all the custom supports. But yeah, you're gonna have to catch all of those islands. And then I also always support underneath this chin here, this long bridge that's about to be made. And then also on this one, which you're not gonna have to do on Mollus's, is you're gonna have to support this bridge here as well, or else you're gonna get a lot of drooping. Uh, so you have to support that, catch that before that, and then this is always going to be it too. This is going to be the last spot that you have to support is right there on the nose of the Green Ranger. You're going to have to support this piece or else it's going to print into free space. But you'll see when we do the models.plugus one, it's going to be very, very simple. Uh, but if you decide to choose this one and it's still a great model, it's, it's crisp, it's nice, it has a lot of features. You're going to maybe want to use regular supports instead of trying to catch everything. Tree supports will really help if you're into the tree supports. It should help you out just blocking off things that you don't need to tree support like this big nose area. But let's get into the other file. All right, so I have the other one oriented exactly the same way, already sliced in here. And as you see, without supports, we're down to two days. That shaved off over 14 hours it has the mouth it has the eyes it has the gem so you don't have to print anything extra there and is significantly less plastic you'll see when i put the back plate in here you're looking at about 400 to 450 grams for the entire helmet to be done when you use this file so let's look at how these layers stack up. Because we don't have that magnet layer, they just do one singular line here. Again, I'm going to catch this chin piece here. That's gonna be one of the areas that I'm definitely going to support. But then from there on, you know, I'm gonna support the back and all of this rim. But then you're gonna see this mouth area layers one layer on top of each other very, very easily. So you don't have to support any of this. All that's gonna layer very nicely. So you don't support anything in this area. The only thing that we're gonna have to catch for this entire print is just this nose. I just make a nice tower along this rim here and that is it. So it makes it super, super simple and you don't have to worry about all of these other things. So keep that in mind when you're choosing which file you wanna do. So over here on the left, I'm gonna click my custom support cylinder. Uh, you can probably use eight millimeters for your size or 10, but all I do is I go through and I paint these onto where I would support everything. So I'm gonna go around the entire rim of the helmet here. You can skip a few spaces here. Uh, the red area is where you have set for, you know, 65 degree overhangs or whatever but I just go around and I just click on all these areas, adding the, my own custom supports. Instead of turning all of the supports on, it makes it so much easier to go through and just do my own. So as you can see here, I put my custom supports around the rim of the helmet. I caught the nose of the helmet and under the chin, and we are just at two days, nine hours and 55 minutes, 371 grams of plastic. So let's look at how these layers go and it should be really, really nice. It's such an easy thing to support with this. Like I said, this Mollus.plug is one really prints nicely. So the layers all lay up there. We're not gonna have any missing spots. The mouth layers one on top of the other so we don't have to support anything down there. And then all we're gonna worry about is catching the center triangle there. And as soon as that's caught there, I like to support this thin little layer that's coming up. 
and we are good to go. It's such an easy print. It's gonna be so much less plastic than the do 3 d one, but if you still wanna use that one, definitely go ahead. I would just recommend something like tree supports and catching all of those little magnet things, but you're gonna have a little bit of an issue with the fact that those details are kind of like mashed on. The back is even simpler. You can just leave it straight up there. I then do my supports around the rim there and I catch this little tab on there and we're looking at 17 hours, 120 grams of plastic. Hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if there's still any confusion. I think that I went over everything, but if I missed something that you wanted to know, just ask in a question down below in the comments. Thank you so, so much. Hopefully this helps you guys get your own helmet and get you guys printing and squared away. I plan on doing more and more of these how to print ones to show you more and more Cura setups because it's a question I get quite often. Again, thank you for all the support. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube things that really help me grow. You guys are fantastic. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. You guys are the backbone of the channel. I really couldn't do this without you. Thank you so, so much. I love you guys. Peace.